What happens when you treat foreign policy like a board game? You become Justin Trudeau. It's been a month since he accused India of killing a Khalistani. Since then, a lot has happened and he's not given proof yet. The latest episode was last week. Around 40 Canadian diplomats left India. Ottawa was enraged. They accused, they accused India of being unethical and unreasonable. They also called it a violation of the Vienna Convention. India rejected all of that. New Delhi's position was based on diplomatic parity. You have 10 diplomats in my country. I have 10 diplomats in your country. That's parity. If not exactly the same number, then at least close. But in Canada's case, it was not even close. They had around 61 diplomats in India. New Delhi had just 20 in Canada. And it wasn't just about the number. It was also about what these Canadian diplomats were up to. Listen to India's foreign minister. Uh, parity is very much provided for by the Vienna Convention, which is the, uh, which is the relevant uh, international uh, rule on this. Uh, but in our case, we uh, invoke parity because uh, we had concerns about continuous interference uh, in our affairs uh, by uh, Canadian personnel. Uh, we haven't uh, made much of that public. Uh, my sense is over a period of time, more stuff will come out. Uh, and people will understand uh, why we had the kind of discomfort with many of them which we did. Interference. That is India's accusation against Canada. Now, this diplomatic tussle will hurt people on both sides. Canada has stopped visa services at three locations. They warned of a backlog. India stopped visa services last month itself. New Delhi cited security issues. If diplomats cannot go to work, how can they approve visas? Hence the suspension. But India's foreign minister also emphasized that this was temporary. If things improve, visa services could resume. In fact, Minister Jay Shankar said he was hoping for it. We stopped issuing visas in Canada. Uh, because it was no longer safe for our diplomats to go to work to issue visas. So their safety and security was the primary reason. Uh, we had to temporarily stop the issue of visas uh, because, as you know, uh, giving, ensuring safety and security of diplomats is the most fundamental aspect of the Vienna Convention. If uh, uh, we see progress there, I would like very much to resume uh, the issue of visas. So now it's up to Justin Trudeau. He's like that losing gambler at the casino. He made a massive bet. He thought he had the right cards, but then his fortunes changed. Trudeau has two options now. A, he can cut his losses and leave the game, or B, he can gamble some more. If he chooses option B, the risk is obvious. Because Trudeau is not just gambling with money, he's gambling with political capital. And for leaders, that's more important than money. Right now, everything Trudeau does is backfiring, not just with India, but everything. He recently visited a mosque in Toronto. He was reaching out to Canada's Muslims after Israel's attack on Gaza. In normal circumstances, that should be fine. But when you've just offered unconditional support to Israel, maybe not. Take a look at how the people reacted. How many more Palestinian children oh, need to be slaughtered? Man. How many more before you call for a ceasefire? Boo! Boo! That's 6,500 under the rubble. 2,000 children. Shame on you. This man won't even call for a ceasefire to stop the slaughter of Palestinian women, children, and men. Shame, shame, shame. Don't use regular card. I'm going to tell you to buy it. Upside, shame, shame. Go to our side. So he was booed there. And just to be clear, we're not questioning Trudeau's Israel policy. We're questioning his methods, his timing. The same thing that he said about India. Trudeau could have easily discussed this issue privately. He could have handled it diplomatically. Instead, he made a spectacle out of it. And the Canadian opposition is loving it. Their leader, Pierre Polyevre, has questioned Trudeau's India policy. And this weekend, he doubled down. Let me quote from what he said. This is the Canadian opposition leader. He's talking about Justin Trudeau. He says he's so incompetent and unprofessional that we are now in major disputes with every major power in the world, and that includes India. And that's the charitable part. The rest is even worse. Let me quote again. Beijing is interfering in our country, opening police stations in Canada. Justin Trudeau is considered a laughing stock in India. 
President Biden is walking all over Trudeau and treating him like a doormat and slapping him, slapping him around like a rag doll. These are the words of the leader of Canada's opposition. Polls say he could be the next prime minister of the country and he says Trudeau's handling of India is wrong. But is the prime minister listening? He's accusing India of violating basic diplomatic principles. That doesn't sound like a de-escalation to me. What happens next is entirely in Trudeau's hands. He started this needless conflict. He can end it as well. And if he doesn't, his people will at the polling booths.